Hey everybody, welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today is gonna to be a bit of an information overload. Some things are only gonna to pertain to my car and there are gonna be several things that will pertain to any S54 swap into either a sedan or a wagon. So let's get started. The first thing that I wanna talk about is the windshield washer fluid tank. Now, in my case, the windshield washer fluid tank that was on the M3 was completely destroyed and I don't really like having the windshield washer tank down in the bumper. You can't see it and they tend to break more because you run things over, you hit curbs, whatever silly little thing it was that, that caused it to break, they have a tendency to break down there a lot more than they break up here. In fact, I haven't seen one up here break unless they've been in a major accident. So what I did was I moved the expansion tank for the radiator to the back. Now I'm gonna go over that here in just a little bit and talk about all the routing I had to do and some of the pieces that you're gonna need, some of the things you're gonna need to do. It's pretty easy and it only cost me about 25 bucks to do this project versus buying another tank because the one I got was broken so to replace it was gonna be like 80 bucks or whatever and I was able to reuse this tank spend $20 to relocate the expansion tank to that spare compartment and then I just saved $60 now before we go and look at this any closer one of the things that I'm gonna have to do is extend the cable that goes to the temperature sensor there is a sensor at the bottom of the tank and on the non M cars that tank sits over here on this car it it sat right here. So no matter what, you were gonna have to extend this wire anyways. So let's take a look at that wire and then I'll show you all the routing I had to do to move the expansion tank from where it used to sit here on the M3 to this spare compartment. So here's the wire right here. I have it tied in this little knot so I know which one it is. These are the headlights, but this used to sit just down back behind here and now I'm gonna have to run it all the way over to the other side of the engine. Now on the M3, there was actually wire harnesses that would run side to side over this brace across the front of the car. For some reason in this wagon, there aren't any wires like that. So I'm actually going to be cutting this plug and what you wanna do is cut it uh, not right against the plug. You wanna leave a couple inches. So I'm probably gonna cut it about right here and then I'm gonna run this wire back up and then run it up over the engine where the harness for the O2 sensors run and the power wire. There's a little plastic thing that holds this. It'll run across here and then into that spare compartment. So if you see here, there's a hole. It is quite large because I actually drilled the hole in the wrong spot the first time, but it's okay. I smoothed this all out so you can see here, it is not cutting my finger at all. Don't have any problems. And then I bought this section of hose right here. And then I was able to reuse these end pieces by cutting them off the original hose. The original hose went from here and then swooped right back to right here where that used to sit originally. Here's the original hose and you can see here that I was able to take an angle grinder and I very carefully cut that band off but not deep enough to damage the connectors. There's one on each side so I was able to take both those connectors, that's this one here and that one over there and then I just bought that radiator hose there and then used some different hose clamps. Those should be just fine. So the only thing you need to do to make this happen is buy this hose here, this one here which we'll show in a second and then mount this expansion tank back here in this cubby in a way where it won't hit the hood or anything like that. So mine's actually sitting up quite high. We're gonna move this out of the way and I wanna show you how exactly I mounted it. So this hose here just goes straight down through the fender well and then we'll get a real close look with the light. So what you're seeing right here is actually the original bracket that this used to hang on and I cut out the section that used to hold the secondary vacuum pump down there on the right hand side right there there is a tab that's got a little piece of rubber on it. So this actually isn't solid. It actually flexes a little bit, just like it would originally. And then that piece of metal right there is hooked up. And then I've got a couple more in the back. There's that one straight back. And then there's an L bracket just behind here that helps hold this whole thing together. Most of these have rubber washers in between there. So underneath this, there's a rubber washer to keep this so it's not solid. And that's how I was able to mount this in there. Now, originally there is a plastic hose that comes off of this radiator hose here in the front. It comes up and over, and then over to where the expansion tank was. Clearly that's not gonna work anymore. So that's why I bought this. This is actually fuel line, if I remember right. I did that because it was really the only size that would fit. I think I actually paid extra for this because I, we couldn't find radiator hose that was this small, but that's what that looks like on the one side. Again, same thing. I was able to cut this connector out of the old plastic hose and then was able to reuse it for this. And then this side here is just a friction fit. So I'll just plug this in on this side and then run this down and over and plug this old connector into where that normally goes. All right, and then the next thing we're gonna talk about is 
the solenoid off of the M3. So if you can see here, this is the one that the M3 used to use. So this was originally on the S54. There are two plugs on this. There's one here, and then there is one here. Now, when you go to the body harness on this non-M car, there's only one plug. And I was able to swap that out with the other engine. So I'm not sure if that's correct yet. So don't quote me on that, but I'm hoping that that'll work out for us because again, there's only one plug on the body of the car. So where this is requiring two, it looks like it does the same function as the other one, but I, I'm not sure the difference between the two. And when I tried to look it up, I couldn't find anything on it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because a lot of this stuff, uh, there's very little info on it. So the other thing I want to talk about is tuning. Now we are sending out the ECU and the instrument cluster. In fact, I just sent that out. I will report back on how all that works out and we'll do a video on it. I've never worked with these guys before, so I'm hoping it'll be a good experience. And supposedly we're going to be able to keep the key for this car. Supposedly you're supposed to bring over the EWS system from the M3 to the wagon to get this computer side, the, the engine side to start. And the guy I've been talking to said that he can actually take the instrument cluster and the computer and match miles, get the EWS on the engine side to be basically deleted so it's not looking for a, a specific signal, it's just looking for a signal. And so that way the engine will still start with the EWS system that's in the wagon. It'll match mileage. He was saying that the sport button and um, the LED lights that are in the instrument cluster, all that. We're gonna go through, I've got a big list of everything that I've got questions about that I'm curious about that we wanna do. And again, we'll make a video on that. So we're gonna continue on talking about some things that people don't really tell you about when you're doing an S54 swap. All right, so the next item I wanna talk about is a little bit of a manual swap item. So we're gonna actually move this out of the way real quick here. This line right here is your clutch line and you're gonna to need to hook this up and it doesn't matter if you've got an automatic or a manual these are both the same on the automatics the nipple that comes out here has actually been sealed and you're going to need to cut that off and then slide this on on the manual it already looks like this so if you're going from manual to manual that's all you've got to do if it's an auto to manual all you do is cut that end off and then you're able to slide this hose on and I actually did it fast enough where I actually didn't end up leaking any of this out. This has been this has been done recently enough. I didn't want to lose all my fluid, so I was able to just slip that on and don't have to worry about it. Now, bringing back over this hose, this is the next thing we're going to go over. If you see this hole right here and you see this connector on this side, the M3, this plugs in on this side and on the non-M, it plugs over on that side. So, what I'm probably going to end up having to do is taking this crimp, removing it, cutting the hose here, moving this connector up to this, and then I should be able to slide this down, and then I should be able to plug this in no problem. Now the last thing I wanna go over, we've talked about in a different video, and that is the transmission tunnel insulation, the sound deadening that runs through the transmission tunnel. I had to remove it. I didn't have to remove all of it. I just removed a section that goes along the top because the transmission was actually hitting the foam and pressing into it so hard that uh, I didn't want it to damage anything. I don't think it would damage the casing or anything like that, but there is a little breather thing on the top of this six speed, and I didn't want that shoved up into the foam so hard it was gonna damage anything, and it is plastic. And there was just a couple other little things that was making me a little bit nervous. So I just cut that out, it wasn't a big deal, but the more and more I've been reading, it looks like there is a difference between the foam that sits on the manual M3 and the automatic non-M. I didn't know that. I would have never have thought to look there or research that, but it was something I found out by experience and so it's something that we've been talking about. So there are five things that I've had to do and look out for while doing this S54 swap, while doing custom swaps like this. So sorry for the information overload. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of some time-lapse while we put together uh, those other two lines that I was talking about during the video. I'd like to put those on tonight, just kind of show them off. 
a little bit, but we're gonna stop the talking section here. I'm sure you're sick of my voice. I'm sick of hearing myself talk, and I really just wanna start working on the car and getting some of this stuff buttoned up. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's content, hit the like button, subscribe if you are new. If you have any comments or questions about any of this, leave them down in the comment section below. If you are interested in our 10,000 subscriber giveaway, check out our Instagram. All you have to do is follow. If you are interested in the details, all of that will be on Instagram. Also check out our Patreon link in the description below. Just a dollar a month helps us out a lot and also allows you to see early ad-free access of our content earlier than anybody else on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.